Hello everyone and thanks for joining me with Glitch Picnic number 2. Today we'll be looking at some rather tasty glitches, and they are the tastiest of glitches. From the original Legend of Zelda all the way through to sort of Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time N64 era. Now I hope you enjoyed the first one which was the Pokemon Glitch Picnic. And uh, please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And also follow me on Twitter because I made a Twitter especially for this. So thanks, sit back, enjoy. Uh, that's it. Ready, let's go. Today we'll be starting off with The Legend of Zelda for the NES. The first thing you want to do is create a new save file. Call yourself whatever you want to call yourself at this point, and then go in here. Once you're in here, don't collect the sword and just exit. Find this secret. Go inside the secret. Collect the 30 rupees from the Moblin. Go back out. Find a shop that sells bombs. Buy the bombs of the 30 rupees you've just found. Go to this place. Bomb this wall. Go inside. Collect the heart container from the old man. Go to this place. Bomb this wall. Go inside and collect this heart container. Once you've done all that, it's time to retrieve the white sword from the old man in this cave. If you're thinking that that was a little bit too hard to follow, I'm about to put a little map up so you can pause the video whenever you like to look at it. I've drawn up a map of where you need to explore, from 1 to 4 and the finish. All you need to do is do what you see in each clip, and you should be able to get the white sword without ever getting the wooden sword. This might not have seemed like a glitch, but if you return to the start where you should have gotten the wooden sword and collect the wooden sword, it doesn't do anything, so that's kind of a glitch, so that's why I put this in here. Another simple glitch that will help you out in the first dungeon is if you enter, you notice you can't get through the door, you need a key to do it, walk back out, and then basically just walk straight back in. The door will be gone, the key won't be needed, and you're free to just explore the rest of the dungeon without ever collecting that key, so that's a good one for you guys. Okay, so the first one wasn't really a glitch, but I'm going to count it as a glitch because when you pick that wooden sword up, it does not go in your inventory, so that's kind of glitchy. There was another glitch that I did want to show you guys, but it requires really precise button presses, and my thumbs are so fat and just really slow, so I can't show you that, but I'm going to link in the description to that one in case you do want to see that one, and it's quite an interesting one. I mean, tool assisted speedrunners do it, so... It must be good. Next up, I'm going to do some Zelda 2 glitches, which are a little bit more interesting than these ones, and in fact, they are real glitches, so there you go. For the glitches in Zelda 2, we won't need to start a new save file. In fact, it's probably better off to have access to all of the areas, so a finished one would be better off for these glitches. To do this first glitch, you need to hold left and right on the D-pad at the exact same time. It's probably more recommended to use an emulator because it's hard to do on a NES pad because you have to bend the buttons right over and you risk damaging it. The game acts like this just because it doesn't know whether you're trying to go right or left and that's the only reason you get flung around. Speedrunners always use this glitch because it gives them a lot of extra speed to finish the game a lot quicker. There are also a lot of glitches related to this one where you can walk through walls and stuff just because it can't render the walls fast enough to stop you going through them. And this is another reason it's popular with speedrunners. Another pretty pointless but funny glitch is just to lift the elevator to about Link's waist height and then run at it and crouch. You'll go underneath the lift, but the second you let go of crouch, you'll be back inside it. It's pretty annoying to do in this dungeon just because there's enemies all over the place and they won't stop friggin' hitting me! For this glitch, find any dungeon that has a set of falling blocks. You'll be in front of the heads-up display when you get on the top of them. From this point, use the fairy spell and you'll be transported outside onto the top of the palace, which is really strange. I'm not sure why that happens, but it happens. You can't use the lift like normal, and uh, what I do here is I use the fairy spell, and that transports us again just underneath where we were, except the camera's all screwed up. We're stuck on the left. And the way I fix this is just by exiting the palace and coming back into the palace again. And then all of the camera angles and everything are just as they were. And uh, there's no real big side effects to this one, so it's safe to do yourself. The final glitch I think's worth showing you guys is in the mountain town of Darunia. Where we're going to go is Glitch Town, which is similar to Glitch City on Pokemon, except there aren't quite as many side effects. Equip your jump spell and go to the building I'm about to go to here. I missed the jump, so I got from the other side, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Once you've done that, climb onto the tallest building and switch to the fairy spell. Jump and use the fairy spell. Once again, you'll be transported to another place, and this time it's Glitch Town. It's a town that isn't like any other town in the game. Uh, there's just a few NPCs and stuff here, and there's this guy that says you must save Hyrule and then contradicts himself by trying to kill us. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? All of the doorways take you back to the entrance of the town. The sign actually just reads, It is said 
the east of Naboru has ellipses. And uh, that's the only thing. And then you go through the door again and it takes us there. So then the only thing worth doing then is to go out of the exit to the right. And you'll basically be stuck in the sea. And that's all the glitches I have for Zelda 2 to show you, so let's move on to the next game. Okay, so now we've seen some pretty interesting glitches, and they're getting worse and worse as we go through the timeline of Zelda releases. The next game I'm going to do is A Link to the Past, and there are a few really big glitches in this one, including one that you can finish the game in under three minutes, and that is not a lot of time. I'm not going to show you how, because there's better explanations than I can do, so I'll just link one in the description for you of a guy that I really like. So yeah, some of the glitches in A Link to the Past are really good, so I hope you enjoy these ones. Okay guys, the first thing I want to show you on A Link to the Past is the Walk Through Walls glitch. This can be done at any point during the game, but I'm doing it from the start just because, well, it's easier for me to show you from here. This is also the glitch that will help you finish the game within three minutes, which is quite an impressive feat, so that's in the description as well. You start off the game as normal and walk around the edge of the castle like you normally would. Go in the secret entrance and collect the sword from the... I don't know whether he's your uncle or just a guy. We'll call him the uncle. Walk through the castle courtyard, into the castle, and up the stairs. Once you get to this point, just jump off the edge and press the save and quit button while you're in the air. That's very important. As soon as you've done that, reload the save that you've just saved, and walk back through the courtyard without getting hit, and that's very important. If you get hit, the glitch won't work. Follow the path I'm taking here and go to the left through the door. This will lead you onto a bridge with an enemy. The enemy is a key part of this glitch. What you need to do is lure him towards you while you're pushing against the wall. As soon as he touches you and you're pushing against the wall, you'll just pop straight through it. And that's the easiest thing in the world. This glitch is not hard to pull off and you could finish the game within three minutes and everyone will be really impressed with you if, you if they don't know the glitch themselves. So you can explore any of the dungeons. They're all sort of interconnected. And uh, I actually got stuck in one of them. You can't get hurt and you can't really interact with anything either as far as I can see. So that's a good one anyway. Just uh, enjoy that one. I don't really know how to finish this link, so... Next glitch! So the first game-breaking glitch we're going to come across is at the top of Death Mountain. All you have to do is walk through this portal here to the Dark World. And once you're in the Dark World, just head to the left so you'd be stood where Spectacle Rock usually would be. Bring up the inventory and select the magic mirror if you haven't already got it selected. And then just use it so that you'll be stood on the top of Spectacle Rock. Once you've done that, you need to be exactly over the centre of the cave. And to do that, just bring up the hook shot and fire it downwards towards the rocks. And you'll be able to see yourself whether it's over the middle. In this case, that time I was over the middle and that time was just a test to make sure I was over the middle. Turn round and charge the sword and just walk backwards over the edge. You'll glitch into the cave and you'll be stuck. That's exactly what happens. You won't be able to do anything except open up the menus, but what's the point in opening the menus if you can't move? I wouldn't recommend saving just in case you break your game, and I'm not going to do it because I don't want to have to get this far all over again. So I'll leave that one to you guys. This is another glitch you might see just before doing that glitch, and it's just a Tektite sprite glitch where he's just jumping into the cave and he comes out of the top, comes out of the bottom, comes out of the sides. Whatever, it took me ages to do this because I actually saw it happen when I wasn't recording and then he wouldn't, he can't get back into that slot. It's such a fine space for him to get into that it was lucky I caught it, so there's a little one for you. Okay, so here's a glitch that I don't think many people know how to explain and I'm one of them myself, I don't know how to explain this but I can do my best. The first thing you want to do is teleport to the Desert of Mystery. You want to go in through the Dark World and have the Bombus Medallion equipped. Once you're in the Dark World, I actually made an attempt to do this glitch with different weapons. I used the sword, but I couldn't find anything using it. And I also used the boomerang, but I couldn't find anything using that. But apparently other weapons do work, I just couldn't get them to. So after I failed with those two, I actually went back to the original method and used the bombus medallion. Once you use it, you're going to get your animation like normal, everything's going to explode, and all the enemies are going to die. And the weird thing is behind Link in this little clip. As you can see, there's a little fire there, which is actually an invisible enemy. And why that appears, no one really seems to know. People speculate that it's a lever that wasn't supposed to be put on water because they don't have an on water sprite. And therefore they can't be seen but they can still be killed and they can't hurt you either so don't worry about that. There's actually three in the Swamp of Evil but I only managed to find two so this is another one that's going to come just below me. And it's going to drop a bomb again. And I can't explain that, I don't think many people know why it happens, but it happens. So we're just going to have to live with that one I'm afraid. I have a quick admission on this one, this isn't my video, but credit goes to the guy that's on screen now, so thanks for that. All you need to do is have the red shield, 
Go find a picket, have the picket steal it, and then use the ether medallion. Make sure the shield was the last thing that was stolen, and you'll get a blue shield when you pick it back up. It's a really simple glitch, and it only lasts for one screen. And that's the final glitch I've got on A Link to the Past, so next game. So with some of the older titles for Zelda out of the way, I'm going to move on to N64 regions now with Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. Majora's Mask I've never played, but fortunately I've downloaded a save file offline, online, so I can go to any of the areas and show you the glitches I need to show you. There's only five, and uh, it was hard for me to capture this because these controllers are less than these controllers. You cannot play Majora's Mask or Ocarina of Time with one of these. It's got to be this! So yeah, let's go. So the first glitch I've got on Majora's Mask is leaving Clock Town early. As you can see, I've not done anything else on the map yet, so this is the first thing I've done since the start of the game. Walk through to East Clock Town, and go over to where the guard is, and turn directly back on yourself. Once you've done that, press the Z targeting button, and keep hold of it, and just walk backwards. And the guard, eventually, will just pop out of the way. And that's as quick as it goes, that's it. That's all there is to it, I can't believe they overlooked something so big, so soon in the game. I'm not sure what the extent of the glitch is, I don't know how far you can explore, but that's a really good one to try first thing. Okay, so this glitch is really interesting. I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy this one. The first thing you want to do is use the Song of Soarin' and get yourself to Zora Cape. On the left, there are a few little pots there, and you want to smash them to get yourself full magic and the full amount of arrows, because you're probably going to run out of magic doing this glitch. Run over to the edge here and equip the ice arrows. Now, the aim of this is to build a bridge all the way over to the Great Bay Temple that you can see in the distance. You'll never go out of bounds as long as you stay on these platforms, but if you land in the water, you will go out of bounds and it'll transport you to the Great Bay Reef. The interesting part about this glitch is that the Great Bay Temple never gains in size, not much anyway, no matter how close you are to it. So that's really interesting, and uh, I guess that's something the programmers did, that no matter how far away you are, it will always be the same size. You can't really enter the temple from here, you can't shoot anything extra in there. But, well, I, I couldn't tell because I actually ran out of magic just before. I mean, you could optimise that and probably reach it, but I don't think you can go in there. Jumping in the water just takes you straight back to the Great Bay Reef, so that's the end of that glitch. It's a really interesting one, just to see that people... I, I don't know, that's good. Really simple glitch. Find anything you can Z-target and Z-target it. Get the hookshot out, and press the R button to bring your shield out, and the, the hookshot will point to the floor for some reason, who the hell knows. Un Z target, and then you can walk around with the, with the hookshot laser pointing at the floor. If you try and Z target while you're not aiming at anything, Link will try and use the hookshot as the hero's bow, and that's just not right, so that's really weird. Why does it do that? Who knows? Who knows why any of these glitches work? I'm really running out of ideas now. Useless glitch number 4621. All you have to do is equip a Deku stick and find any ledge that you can jump off and hit a wall doing a jump slash with it. This place in Clock Town is absolutely perfect for this glitch, so equip the Deku stick, jump off the edge, and jump slash. The stick will break in half, but it'll still be completely usable. It does knock one off your Deku stick inventory, which I would recommend doing it with two Deku sticks in that case. But it still works, and it doesn't have the same hit range, it does have half a hit range as well. So that's an interesting one, and it's still completely pointless! For my final glitch in Majora's Mask, make your way up to the Mayor's Residence in East Clock Town, and then follow the path I'm taking right now. And while we're doing this path, I'm just going to explain why I'm doing minor glitches rather than major glitches. The reason for that is because everyone in the whole world knows all of the big glitches, but not many people might know about these little ones, so... It's just like, people might be more inclined to watch this if they've not seen the glitches before. And there may only be little basic ones, but they're still interesting, so... Anyway, once you're at this point, just line yourself up with the... Oh, hello Link's face. Line yourself up with the stairs. Once you jump off, the cutscene will start as if you're going through to the next part of Clock Town again. But unfortunately, you're in the air, so it doesn't know what to do. It just drops you straight through the stairs. And that's basically all of the glitches I've got on Majora's Mask, so enjoy them all. So here we are. We're finally up to Ocarina of Time. Many people will have been waiting for this one, and I know that. I've got seven juicy glitches, and not many of them are boring this time. Only a few of them, so you'll be entertained, I'm sure. So without further ado, anyway, let's get on with these Ocarina of Time glitches, because I'm sure we're all dying to get away from this video by now. So now we're up to the Ocarina of Time, and I bet a few people were waiting for this one. The first thing you have to do is start a new save file, because the first two glitches I've got are from the very start of the game. 
Go and collect the Kakiri Sword and then save the game and reset so you come out of Link's house. Once you've done that, go to the Lost Woods and navigate right, left, right, left again until you get to this little ponded area. You want to line yourself up towards the pedestal like I'm about to do on the video and jump so that you land directly in the middle of it. Once you've done that, don't forget to equip your sword because you need the sword out and I forgot to do it. Then you, once the sword's equipped and Navi turns up on the seat up button, you have to press B twice as fast as you can so that Link does a jump slash. Once he's in the middle of the jump slash, you've got to press the up C button and you'll be transported underwater because the cutscene where you're speaking to Navi just puts you underwater. Once you've successfully done that, you'll be in Zora's River and you'll be free to explore for quite a lot of the areas. In a moment, I'll show you a glitch in Kakariko Village that you can do from this point as well, where you can get to the bottom of the well without doing anything else in the game. Before I show you how to get to the bottom of the well, before you do anything else, I found this little glitch, I can't find any information about it online, but every time you go into Kakariko and back out, the owl talks to you, and I think that's rather strange. I can't find anything online about it. And I guess it's because we escaped from the forest early, so there's been some kind of missing cutscene, I don't know. But I just think that's strange, and I hope I'm the discoverer of it. Let's get back onto an interesting glitch now, and this is bottom of the well without doing anything else in the game except for the forest escape. What you want to do is hit a cuckoo twice. It doesn't matter which one, just preferably one next to the well because that's where we're going. And I had to walk all the way back to it. Once you get back to the well... Throw the cuckoo onto the edge, and then the third slash you need to do will be a jump slash from the opposite side of the well. Just like you're going to see here. Once you hit it for the third time, if you're above the water, then you'll be transported under the water just like in the Navi dive. And it's really hard to do. It took me quite a few attempts to do it. But as soon as you get control of Link again, all you have to do is swim opposite the direction of the ladders. And you'll end up at the bottom of the well. Once you're in the bottom of the well, you're free to explore to your heart's content. You can go through all of the walls that aren't actually walls. I don't know whether you can get the Lens of Truth, because I'm sure you need other items to be able to get it, but there probably will be glitch ways to get to that, so I don't know. I mean, if you find any interesting glitches to do with this glitch, then please don't hesitate to add, uh, comment in the comment section below. Yeah, that one, that's the one. Getting a rock stuck in you. Go to the top of Death Mountain Trail outside Goron City and equip the hover boots. Once you've done that, climb just up the ledge here and pick the rock up and you'll just get a rock stuck inside you. What? Why? Who knows? You can throw it back out of yourself if you really want. Here's one where you can swim on land. All you have to do is go into a body of water and turn around so that you're facing the shore. Hold R and press down on the control stick so that you're swimming towards the camera and then equip the iron boots. Before you come out of the menu, you have to be holding forward and R on the controller, and then you'll just start swimming in the iron boots, so you can swim anywhere, back onto the shore, and then re-equip the Kakiri boots. And then you're free to let go of the R button, but it works a little bit better if you're still holding the R button, so it's up to you what you do there. You can use items and things. Some of them are really glitchy, but I didn't catch any of that on footage, so unfortunately I can't show you any of that. But it's really strange to see some of the movements that Link does on land while swimming. It, I just, I can't make sense of it, so what the hell. One of the most famous glitches in Ocarina of Time is the Infinite Sword glitch. To do this one, you need to find a sign that is unbreakable. So this one in Lake Hylia is absolutely perfect. Z target it to line yourself up perfectly. Press R to crouch and then do a stab. A few milliseconds after the stab, you have to press A to read the sign. If you've done it right, your sword will go blurry, like you can see the effect on my sword there. It's not a static image, it's like blurring as I move. You can just walk into enemies and bushes to destroy them. And I couldn't find a way to walk off the edge of things to do a jump, but I guess that's just a minor little glitch to cause by it as well. And uh, here's an enemy as well that I defeated just by walking into it. It made my game really laggy, and I think the reason for that is that I was using the Wii's Virtual Console, and the Wii isn't very powerful, so there's a lot of lag on it. As you can see, the camera can't even keep up with me, so yeah, it's a really interesting glitch, handy for beating Ganon at the end of a glitched run and things like that. If you watch Cosmo speedruns, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm ending on a pretty boring glitch today, guys, and I'm sorry about that. When you child Link, hold the Deku Shield out in front of you by pressing the R button. Switch out to the Hylian Shield, and if you've done it right, then Link should still be in the same position he was holding the Deku Shield in, which isn't the right sprite animation or model animation for this shield. As you can see, he's trying to hold it in front of him, but it's on his back. 
if you do this vice versa and have the Hylian shield equipped and then switch out to the Deku shield, you'll be floating in mid-air, which is quite strange, but it happens. So that's the only, that's the final glitch I've got for you today, guys. And I thank you very much for watching again and get ready for the outro. So that's all of the Zelda glitches that I wanted to show you guys, all rolled into one nice little package. There are loads and loads more glitches. You can probably find so much more on the Zelda Wiki and Zeldapedia. All the other pedias and encyclopedias of Zelda glitches. Google them, you'll find so many more, but a lot of them are quite hard to pull off. You have to practice and practice them. If there's any other requests and things for me to do, then please don't hesitate to comment below. And please like, share and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video. I plan on doing many more, so I hope you guys stick around to watch them. Thanks a lot again, and I will see you next time.